Hey guys, friends and family, my name is Skylance, and I'm known for my list videos, for my episodic reviews, and for my compilation videos, where, you know, I, I take multiple reviews, put them together, and it's like, okay, you know, which game is better than, it's basically, you know, top tens, whatever. Anyways, so I'm, you know, looking forward to doing more of those, it takes a little bit to build them up, so thanks for supporting me, liking, sharing videos, and, you know, Patreon and stuff like that, but, um, it, it, since I do these kind of videos, where I play lots of different games, um, you know, I, I can really see trends very easily, especially as a YouTuber, you know, I, I, I know what's up and coming generally and I know what I could talk about to get a lot of views or to get more attention I often avoid those like if I really wanted to just grow on YouTube I would just play pay to win Asian games like frankly gotcha especially anything anime like that's it if you want to make make a new channel and you want to make money in a month guys do list videos of any anime style games especially if they're gacha make sure you to put in how much money that you supposedly are spending on the gacha for sure definitely anyways so yeah no I, I know the trends I can see them that is what makes me special okay now let's talk about some of those trends one of them that I really want to talk about and it's something that I'm af I'm affected by immediately uh, it's kind of been happening uh, this past year or so I've been noticing this but especially right now um, since I am playing actually World of Warcraft I'm playing the new expansion I just reached max level I chose my covenant so I'm playing a blood elf uh, Blood Death Knight, I'm gonna be tanking, and I chose the Blood Daddies, okay, I, I'm, I'm gonna be Venthyr, and, um, you know, it's cool, it's cool, you know, the story was, was interesting, um, the leveling was a little bit easy, blah blah blah, quick review though, basically, and the point of the, the moral of this video, is that it was more single player, and it really didn't feel like an MMO, and it really was more much so an action RPG, is, is how I would define it. And actually, even before this, this is something that people have kind of felt was the trend with Retail WoW. Not even, it, it wasn't even a feeling. Like, that's just known. Like, we knew that. That's why they even had to release Classic WoW. The difference between Classic WoW and Retail WoW basically is the difference between an MMO and an action RPG. There are certain open world aspects, kind of, but more and more... World of Warcraft is like kind of restricting the number of players in any one zone. They are kind of balancing the game to be really more focused around dungeons and specifically the raid encounters and stuff that really isn't unique to massively multiplayer games and really isn't massive at all, actually. So anyways, but we're getting more cinematic gameplay. We're getting um, maybe better told stories, at least, you know, in terms of like that cinematic. Uh, and I think the writing overall is strung together a lot better. Maybe we're getting more unique, fun quests, though I, I say maybe because in World of Warcraft's case, generally, no, it's still kind of boring a little bit, but you know, we'll, we'll talk about that. But basically, um, this is something I'm feeling right now is that, okay, the trend for WoW is that it kind of feels more like an ARPG. And in fact, right before the expansion, I was running like some heroic raids and you know, I, it actually legit felt like Path of Exile or Diablo or like a bunch of other action RPGs that I've played. There was that power fantasy. Um, sometimes, you know, basically it was like you either one shot something or it one shots you. And um, there was like some fun kind of RPG game with that. But for the most part, um, you know, you're killing swaths of enemies and then you have this giant boss that you fight. And a lot of the times you do just kind of wreck shop. But then sometimes, you know, you actually do face something that slaps you down. And that's kind of how ARPGs work. They work on a power fantasy sort of systems, uh, especially Path of Exile, Diablo, that, you know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, Warframe, for sure. So we're seeing MMOs going more in that direction, where it's highly replayable content, or it's content that you will be replaying a lot. And it's not, it's not like you're doing like giant battlegrounds. It's not like you're doing giant open world raids. There's not giant open world bosses. It's more instanced gameplay. It's either solo or co-op or like four player. And especially with World of Warcraft, um, they added this new system called Torghast, which is basically copied straight from old school ARPGs or now like, of course, rogues, rogue style games, roguelites, um, where you run through either single player or with a small party and um, you get, you know, random crazy powers, which could never exist in a giant open world game. And we're seeing more and more MMOs either section off their gameplay or straight up being designed as action RPGs. And before we go a little bit further, I will just kind of disclaimer, I am actually not counting games like Genshin Impact. Uh, so many people put Genshin Impact as like an MMO. Shut the fuck up. Oh my god. Cancel yourselves. Delete your channel. No. Nope. A, a co-op game is an MMO? Shut up. Oh my god. Anyways, all those fucks who say that, I hate them. But um, no, like, you have a bunch of people who call like four-player games or two-player games MMOs just because they're anime and they're RPGs. No. No. Monster Hunter is not an MMO. Shut up. No. So, those games are not MMOs, I am not talking about those. I'm talking about games that, maybe like Final Fantasy XIV, where if you play it as an MMO, 
you're gonna have a really bad time. It's actually a bad MMO, but if you play it as like a single player and a potentially like co-op game when you do dungeons and you join a, you know, guild and, and do some end game stuff, uh, but for the most part, you play it like a Final Fantasy game. You don't play it like an MMO. It happens to have quests and it happens to have a lot of tropes and a, a payment scheme that is very much like an MMO, but actually it's not it's not really that good of an MMO. And we're gonna see a lot of games like that. And uh, my list videos and my future videos are gonna reflect that, where I'm like, ah, you know, in terms of massive mechanics, in terms of massively multiplayer, it's actually kind of bad, and I'm gonna rank my list on that. You know, if I do top 10 MMOs, I'm gonna rank it by its MMO mechanics. Um, you you'll see, you'll see very clearly what I mean, but it's just um, moving forward, we're gonna have a lot of games that, they're gonna be good games, and they might even be better than ever. You know, a, a lot of games fail at cr incorporating a lot of MMO mechanics, and I think that's good. In fact, I, I was known for doing a rant video saying, I wish more MMO weren't. As in, they were not MMOs. Wildstar is a great example. If Wildstar was not an MMO, and it was more of a co-op dungeon diver, kind of like Vindictus or Dragon Nest, or maybe like the original Guild Wars 1, it would have been a much better game and it would be alive today. A lot of games would do much better if that was the case. So, what's going on? Um, now we do have a resurgence of games like Looter Shooters, like Warframe, Destiny is doing pretty decent, I think so for sure. A lot of co-op shooters. Um, man, Rock and Stone, brother, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, and even some roguelites that have co-op mechanics. Like, a lot of people are playing, oh, survival games as well, that aren't quite full MMOs. We just have a lot of games that are very social, that are very online, and very action-packed, that would not be able to do that if they were full MMOs. And I think MMOs are realizing that, um, they don't need to quite exist on their MMO gimmicks, they can go in different directions as well. And maybe they might have some hub towns. I don't think a hub town makes an MMO, but they might have world cities. They might have world bosses. They might have open world zones. But I think more and more games are realizing that if they tighten everything up, they can have, uh, for example, like in the new game, New World, instead of being a giant open world sandbox, they will actually have instanced boss fights. There will be instances now. Albion Online also did the same thing. Why do they have this? Because then you can have more complicated AI. You can have more balanced encounters more challenging encounters and as well it's just easier on the servers right so just in general it's just easier uh, for players to kind of jump in and jump out does it make it a better mmo no but will it make it a better game potentially then again of course we can despair about how mmos are being perverted and basically being turned into action rpgs and that's the point of this video, but at the same time, I don't think it's all doom and gloom, uh, because Torghast is really fucking cool, I love the endgame mythic plus and rating of World of Warcraft, absolutely, but frankly, I look back, and I think we all do this too, of those fun co-op quests in RuneScape, or those those times you, you know, the, the wild EVE Online or Albion Online ganks and things like that, or the epic world bosses in Guild Wars 2, you know, those dynamic events sometimes, um, you know, the, the old stories of somebody, you know, passing you by and helping you out on your journey, you know, you're doing a quest, fighting Hogger or something, somebody comes up, Pally comes and heals you up, Holy Lights, and um, it's, it, th those kind of encounters are unique to MMOs, they're special, and that's why we play the genre, but it does, it's not why we play each specific game. Like, let's be honest. We're going to play World of Warcraft because we want to do end game rating. We're going to play Final Fantasy XIV to continue the story and play with our friends. We're going to jump into Guild Wars 2 for the seasonal events, sure. And all the, a lot of stuff is MMOs. Um, but for the most part, most players don't play MMOs actually for the MMO mechanics. And that fault does lie on the consumer. So hopefully I can raise awareness of what makes MMOs great. Hopefully I can w raise awareness and kind of kill it with kindness of MMOs and just the MMO kingdom of games. You know, what makes them truly special and what you should do in them. Like, you know, how to play these games. What, what kind of ecosystems exist within these different worlds. Stuff like that. I can educate you guys and hopefully I will. But also just I, I, you guys yourselves need to kind of just kind of realize, hey, certain games don't even qualify as MMOs, and certain games that you are playing and paying for, um, they are more and more slowly kind of reducing the MMO magic that they have um, in replace for action RPG magic and actually action RPG goodness. There's nothing wrong with Path of Exile, but from the mouths of Path of Exile's developers, it is not an MMO. What makes an MMO special is not Path of Exile, but Hopefully, moving forward, there will be some up-and-coming games that break that trend and actually go in the opposite direction, and we do see that a little bit with some retro-inspired MMOs, and especially games like Ashes of Creation. But I do want to end the video on a fear. On a fear that games that claim to be sandbox and a game that claims to be an MMO will still buckle to trends. You know, I mean, Ashes of Creation already tried to release a Battle Royale, right? So, we'll see how that 
you know, actually falls out with trending. Albion Online, which was an EVE-inspired and Ultima-inspired game, uh, has instance housing instead of this open world housing that it was going to have. Has instance dungeons instead of just fully open dungeons and stuff like that. Like, you know, more and more games are going to have instance arenas and stuff like that. But that doesn't mean it's a bad thing, but... Hopefully, we could be more vocal, we could be more educated, and for the games that do have true blue MMO mechanics, then hopefully you users, you consumers, you, you actual players, you can make content on that, showcase that, show it off. I've been seeing a lot of awesome open world PvP footage in Albion Online. I think you guys have heard all the stories of EVE Online, and um, you know, hopefully we can do some more. I think you've heard the stories in Guild Wars 2, those epic giant dragon fights, stuff like that. I think hopefully we can keep shouting that stuff out and that's pretty much that's all we can do so i do hope there's a divergence i do actually want more mmos and i think we all can agree they should be more action based they should be more intense more bigger numbers more enemies on the screen just more more gameplay more action absolutely let's do that and those mmos can do that okay they can they can go in that direction but hopefully we do also have a sort of alternative or counterculture to that where we do have oh these are the sandbox mmos these are the ultimate inspired these are the brand new you know like ashes of creation is trying to do hopefully we do have games like that that are willing to experiment with older ideas that have been left behind as well so hopefully that's the the bident direction that we're going with MMOs. Um, I don't think either or is bad or good, but if we all, if the whole industry just follows a singular trend, like gotcha, pay to win, you know, um, Animu inspired and blah, blah, blah. You know, if everything goes in a trend, which generally MMO is a trendy genre because it mostly is a cash grab. Um, that's what I'm worried about, but we can change the tide. We can together. So make videos, you know, cover games, just have fun, play the games that you want, and vote with your wallet. That's all I can ask, especially when it comes... Last, last thing they want to say. When it comes to Kickstarter, early access games, paying sub fees and stuff like this, vote with your wallet. That's it. That's all I got to say. Much love, friends and family. What do you think about the trend of ARPG inspiration inside of MMOs? Um, are you cool with dungeon diving? Are you cool with MMOs, you know, deviating from that? And are you excited for also this new surge of sandbox MMOs that are seemingly up and coming, even though I think most of those are going to fail horribly or be very niche? Uh, thoughts and feelings? Keyboard warriors, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, keep the hype alive, Patreon, stuff like that. And I will see you again next time.